One of the things that I love about your characters is that like we do get some sort of backstory for them, like just like a little bit here and there, and I don't want to spoil anything for the audience about them, but is there something particular that you gave each of your characters? Like did you develop it your own personal backstory to help with the character? Something that maybe the audience didn't see on screen? Yeah, I mean I think it was important for me and George to do that. You know, it's lit it's literally a random day in nineteen seventeen, two random soldiers, you know, nothing about them. And in order to best, you know, portray them characters, we sort of had to know their upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, and also just a little detail as well, though, I was walking in the costume department one day and uh, there was like a picture reference wall, this big wall with loads of photographs of soldiers. And there was one uh, photograph in particular that I saw of three soldiers and there were two soldiers you know, standing either side that were all buttoned up and you saw your average World War One soldier in a black and white photo. And then there was one in the middle who just didn't care had all his coat open, his shirt twisted, he was standing there laughing, and he had his hand on his on his chest. And on that one hand, he had a pinky ring and a middle finger uh, ring. Oh. And, I, and I took that because it just reminded me of Blake. And, uh, you know, even though they're in a terrible war zone, you know, that he's still able to sort of make light of the situation. And that picture reminded me of Blake, so I give Blake the same rings. So with the costume designer, you worked with, is that something that wasn't originally like for your costume no. and you saw it? And that's amazing. Yeah. Cause that's like such a big part of the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there, and then is there something like particularly that, do you have like a similar story about like an extra like type of like backstory? Well, I had, uh, I had a thing, again, I don't want it to give away <laughs> sort of like the kind of certain images that come later with Schofield, right. but, but his home similarly means a lot to him. And, and the, again, the costume department, they taught us there's so much it was one thing as well this that it's not no pun intended it's not uniform mm -hmm. <laughs> like every 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 individual <laughs> that you see looks like has their own kind of detailed thing and there was a lot of stuff sent out from home and so i've got a scarf which you only see the tiny the tiniest bit of but it's sort of it's a tiny scarf that sort of crossed over his heart which i know where that's from in terms of like you know his kind of character but it was handmade by the costume awesome. costume designer jacqueline and, and and her team to you know to kind of to go with the story I built for where that came from. Awesome. Um, I love how Sam and Roger Deakins really utilize the natural lighting um, in the movie. And I know that weather was really dependent on a lot of that natural atmosphere because like the almost the entire movie is filmed outside. So can you talk about how that maybe affected your rehearsals and the actual filming with being such an outside type of like scenery and setting? Yeah, I mean, well, you, you pretty much said it. We could only film when the sun was behind the cloud. Mm. And uh, so we'd all sort of be looking up in the sky every two minutes, wondering, <laughs> how long do you reckon it'll be? Ten minutes? Five yeah. minutes? But even if the sun was, you know, out of the cloud and we couldn't shoot, we'd still use that time to be able to rehearse. That's great, yeah. So, I mean, it was either rehearsals or shooting. There was not much time to sort of sit around, was there? Yeah, no, the very first day we didn't film a thing. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and I think that, you know, some of the producers were probably a bit worried, you know, that, 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 that like day one of six months rehearsal and we didn't do anything. <laughs> we just rehearsed all day, all day, all day, all day because the weather wasn't right. But then by the second day, we were then ahead of schedule by two days because, um, you know, because we've been rehearsing, you know, three days work in the first day. So Obviously, yeah. one of the major things about the movie is the way it was filmed. Um, you know, those like one shots, like they're not easy. A lot of filmmakers don't do them. A lot of actors don't even partake in that type of filmmaking. So. I'm wondering for both of you as actors, what's something that you learned about yourself as an actor in working with Sam and doing the rehearsals and then those those one shots and like particularly how the movie was filmed? Mm. I, I reckon for me, it was to have like a much more three-dimensional awareness of, mm -hmm. of my role on set and of the whole filmmaking process. Like I think some of the time as an actor, you, there's a kind of, and it's true sometimes, but there's that fabled thing of, you know, you being completely focused on what you, do and yeah. almost like the camera is there to observe you being in your character mm -hmm. but actually this was the most mutual collaboration in terms of achieving each shot and filming the whole thing you have to be so aware of each other and there's never a lead element it's never about you know it's never all about the lights it's never all about the acting it's just it's never all about the set it's a constant mutual handoff and we made all of those decisions together mm -hmm. so having a positive three-dimensional awareness and a sort of inside outside perspective on acting in within a scene that was um that was the biggest lesson i learned oh okay dean what about you S same as george really <laughs> just uh, seriously like a big eye opener to our this is a much better you know you know to be having every department sort of muck in as one mm -hmm. one sort of big department was a real eye opener for me a big teamwork mm -hmm. which i've never seen before on a, on a film set 
and really just learning a lot about acting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and just just acting and, and honestly just being just being honest in a scene. You know, yeah. an actor can prepare a million different ways, but to just be honest and, and, and natural in a scene for ten minutes long. Yeah. Right. Just you, you learn so much about yourself as an actor. I mean I've I'll I'll come away from this, you know. I'm very thankful to be a part of this. Yeah. How did you guys like not look at the camera? Because it's like following you guys like so closely. Like, I mean, I know that you're like trained to not look at the camera, but especially like in these particular sequences, is there a moment that you kind of caught yourself being like, oh yeah, like I need to like look this way? <laughs> I think if we ever went, oh yeah, it would have be immediately be followed with, oh no. Oh God, because <laughs> like, you, know, you have to start all over again. Yeah, that thing of like, oh yeah, oh God, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you know. So no, we, we were all right with it. How often did that happen though? Not so often. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah, no, so, um, so did you guys shoot linearly or, I mean, because I know you shot primarily like in England and also Scotland. Um, yeah. So did you shoot the story a lot linearly or what did it kind of jump around within the, the screenplay? It was, how you it, was, it was pretty kind it of was, it was pretty I mean it rarely jumped jumped yeah. from bit to bit but mainly we sort of stuck to one 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 part of the story and carried on from there yeah right. you've worked with actors who have obviously had like an established working relationship and these two actors this is their first time doing such like these like close scenes where they're in the trenches together is as a director do you kind of use a different approach with actors who are kind of working together for the first time especially with this particular movie where they're literally so close together for a for most of the movie. Do I use a different approach? I think every actor requires a different approach. Mm -hmm. I, don't think, I don't think I've ever treated you know, one actor the same as, as, as another. One of the things I was really conscious of is because we had to rehearse this movie for so long because we had to measure every set to be exactly the right length. And I say set, but really you're talking about landscapes. So you have to build orchards and woods and farmhouses and canals and I mean, it was unbelievably complex. Mm -hmm. but, but because of that, they were working together, you know, for months and months. And that friendship just naturally developed. Because in a way, what wow, I was encouraging okay. them to do was live in the spaces more than act. Mm -hmm. And there are long stretches of the movie where there's no dialogue and they just have to exist, you know. Um, and I wanted the physical difficulty of doing it to be real, you know. I mean, that when they're sliding, trying to climb up the wall of, of, a, of, a, of a giant crater, you know, they're really sliding. I mean, they're not... <laughs> They're not acting. They can't get up, you know, and there were a lot of abandoned takes when they just couldn't make it up there. So that sort of stuff, you know, um, allows you to just release them. Also very, very long takes. Yeah. Release them and just, just to be in the space as much as anything else. I love that you and Roger Deakins really just like utilize so much of the atmosphere and the natural light and everything looks so beautiful. I mean, because most of the movie is taking place outside. Um, so I was talking with George and Dean a little bit about this, but during the times where maybe the lighting wasn't right with the clouds or anything like you actually did rehearsing. So yeah. is did you think that that was something that like, was it kind of a thing where it's like, oh, like we can't shoot right now, but hey, let's rehearse. Like, yeah. do you think that was was helpful? Yeah, it was it was yeah. incredibly helpful, and um, you know there was there were times where it was just we had nothing we could do. We just had to wait and wait, mm -hmm. and get ready. Like kind of standing on the blocks at the beginning of a sprint, you have to you just wait until until the gun goes off. <laughs> so there was there were those periods, but most of the time we were able to rehearse. You know, and when I say rehearse, what we're doing is rehearsing the dance of the camera and the actors and the landscape, which is constantly changing and evolving. So there was never a shot that was even close to being the same, mm -hmm. and so rehearsing those shots you know, um, so that the camera knew exactly what they were doing before we went, that was really helpful. So, you know, in, in all cases, it was, it was, it was mostly, it was a good thing. Mm -hmm. What I love about our two major characters in the movie is that they, we do have a little bit of backstory for them. Again, I don't want to give anything away, but I loved how there was like backstory that kind of evolved throughout the film. Um, and when I was talking to George and Dean a little while ago, I asked them if they did any particular extra backstory for their characters. Um, and Dean gave like a great answer about saying how he saw a soldier with like the rings and like he incorporated that with the costume designer. So is that something that you had a discussion with them about? You're like, yes, this is based on real life events, but these two soldiers in particular, like is there some, is that something that you encouraged them to do to, to create a backstory? Yeah, I gave them I gave them a backstory, uh, but okay. not a particularly detailed one. I said, Got look, it. Schofield is, you know, from the home counties, he's middle class, he's been <laughs> to a grammar school, you know, we know this about his family, yeah. you know. But I, I also gave them images, and sometimes that's more useful. I said, if you, they were in a pub together, mm -hmm. Schofield would be sitting by the fire on his own with his dog and a book, 
you know, and a glass of wine maybe. I love it. And uh, Blake would be standing at the bar with his onto his third pint of beer with four of his friends telling dirty stories. And I said, in life, they wouldn't necessarily come together. They wouldn't mm. necessarily be best friends. Right. But in the way that war through throws these these people together, they they become friends almost accidentally, and mm. they don't really know why. They just like each other. And I think that trying to create that kind of accidental friendship by people who in real life wouldn't necessarily have been friends, that was something I was going for. Yeah, well, I loved it, and that was, like, my favorite part of the movie is watching their relationship. I mean, the filmmaking is amazing, too, but I loved their relationship so much. Um, so this film is obviously based on true events, even though there are fictional characters in the story. Um, you've done films where that's, you know, based on novels that have been, you know, based on, like, completely fic that are fictional pieces of work. But with this, how did you kind of, did you approach this differently knowing that there's, you know, real-life events happening for this in this particular movie? Yeah, I mean, you had to observe distance and and you know this only happened for three or four days in 1917 that the Germans just disappeared retreated to the Hindenburg line so suddenly the, they had no enemy but mm -hmm. they were cut adrift across this landscape of trip wires and landmines and snipers so it was a kind of booby trap landscape in a way um, so I was very careful to observe that and the other thing is you know you're you've got to acknowledge and do justice to mm -hmm. a generation of men who died and uh, the scale of it and, this, and the, the nature of a war of such great sacrifice, you know, a time when we perhaps don't understand sacrifice to the same degree, that was something I was really conscious of, making sure we got right as much as I could. And also because my own grandfather fought in the war and the movie's based on stories he told me, yeah. I felt a personal connection to it and a personal uh, a kind of... Uh, duty in mm -hmm. a way that I perhaps haven't felt in other movies. Yeah, well I'm sure your grandfather would absolutely love this movie <laughs> and be so proud of you.